Thank you for making these films such an incredible experience for all of us, giving the opportunity to us to, to make these films for you. And I think... Um, that was pretty surprising to see Harrison Ford get choked up right before he premiered a trailer for the D23 audience last September. I mean, with anyone else, it wouldn't be surprised, yes, yeah, someone is getting choked up over you know finishing something they've been working on for 40 years. No. But this is Harrison Ford, who has been pretty stoic publicly his entire career. Indiana Jones movies are, are about mystery and adventure, but they're also about heart. And, uh... <laughs> you know what they say, once you open up those tear ducts, there's no closing them back up. We have a special surprise for you from the Cannes Film Festival. Before the film's premiere at Cannes in May, Harrison welled up when he was presented with the Golden Palm d'Or on air. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm very touched. I'm very moved by, by this. It, then after watching Indy's last big adventure on the big screen, Harrison had to wipe away tears during the extended standing ovation. It was uh, indescribable. At the press conference the following day, I felt... Um, trying to describe why he got choked up, got Harrison choked up. <laughs> I, I can't even tell you. I mean, it's just... Uh, uh, extraordinary to see you. Now Harrison has had to do a ton of interviews over the past few weeks leading up to the film's release and he's been completely fine. He hasn't needed a tissue for like 95% of them. Stories that are told in family are the, are the ones that we that we remember, remember. But during his Radio Times interview Harrison got to himself <laughs> when he predicted that audiences seeing Indiana get teary-eyed will be like seeing a paternal figure in their own life showing vulnerability. Everybody remembers the first time they see their dad cry. And, uh, and, uh, and this is not going to be one of those moments. But the moment that will really ugh, get you came from his BBC Radio 1 interview. As this last one concerns age and frailty and, and changing nature of life, and I wanted it to feel real for the audience. I wanted them to see the complexity of that experience on, uh, with uh, someone they spent 40 years with. It was BBC's Ali Plum taking a moment to express his gratitude for Harrison that, yeah, hit Harrison big time. Can I just say, on behalf of all the fans, thank you. It's been such an adventure. We love you so much. I don't want to make you blush or anything, but you mean the world to us. And um, thank you. That's all I have to say. And, and, and I must say to you, thank you sincerely. It means the world to me. It's funny that Harrison said that he anticipated that audiences would really be impacted by seeing Indiana shed some tears. And it was. But seeing Harrison Ford shed some tears, <laughs> that doesn't just impact me, that elicits tears from me. <laughs> what about you? Those days have come and gone. Perhaps, perhaps not. I saw the movie and it is a really unique aspect to it that um, we hear about the long-term physical effects that Indy's adventures have had on him. And we do see him reach a breaking point, not just in his emotion, but in the will to live. So it's really interesting to see, you know, one of the larger than life icons, larger than life heroes, you know, really um, take some hits and show his vulnerability. And Harrison does an amazing job at striking that balance. Like, I mean, he doesn't completely abandon what we know Indiana Jones to be, but he shows, you know, the chinks in the armor, so to speak. So it's, yeah, it's a really fantastic performance from Harrison. The story is solid. The action pieces get better as they go along. Um, overall, I'd say it's pretty good, not great. Um, but there's one element that's, I am really sad that I have to say this. Um, there's one element that I really thought could have been improved on, and that was the performance of Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She's fine, but she doesn't deliver the fresh energy, the spark that that performance should have brought to this movie. Yeah, Harrison's fun and charming, but he has to carry the emotional heft of this movie, and he has to worry about, you know, landing the plane, so to speak, of this 40-year journey. But Phoebe as an actor, and Helen as a character, doesn't have that responsibility. They're carefree. Like, this is all new to them. Like, there should be a real joy to their performance, and there's not. And what I started thinking about was, like, think about Sandra Bullock and Speed. 
Hey, get your ass behind the yellow line. Or Catherine Gita Jones in Massive Zorro. No bad. Like they weren't the main protagonist or the main antagonist. No, they were the outsider in the main conflict. And Sandra and Catherine took their roles and just became a major part of that movie when on paper they really weren't. And then I stole it. It's called capitalism. Phoebe's role is on the page. Like it's a great role. And I don't think she delivered. And I hate to say that because I really like her. Um, I think this just shows that she's not a movie star. And no, not everyone, not every great actor is a movie star. Um, she's a great writer. Fleabag was amazing. She's going to do fantastic work after this, but she's not someone who can hold her own in, you know, a big tentpole movie. You've taken your chances, made your mistakes, and now a final triumph. Anyways, I'm going too far off on a tangent here, but yeah, I give Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny a B plus. But yeah, tell me anything we want to talk about on that dial. Do you want to talk about Harrison's tears, Indy's tears, my critique that... If you didn't tear it up, any of it, let me know.